And my special guest today is Viola Butoni, and uh, she's a cooking instructor and a food writer, um, author of a book, and uh, she's going to tell us a little bit about the book. And, and uh, you know, she's Italian born. We were just talking about that. So um, I know she has a lot to share with us that my listeners will be very interested in. Viola, thank you so much for being here today. And thank you, Maria. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Yes. So you are, um, you're the Butoni family from the Butoni Pasta Company, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Well, I yes. am sixth generation, sixth generation of that family. Oh, my yeah. goodness. And yeah. the book, your book now, can you tell everyone the title of the book? So the book is called Italy by Ingredient. Um, as I was mentioning, Maria, I have been uh, in the States for many years. I lived in New York for some time, but now I'm in San Francisco. So I'm Bay Area based. Uh -huh. um, I have been cooking. I mean, really, I've been in food my whole life, literally. Yes. And also, um, I have been in food um, um, professionally for over 30 years. I started in restaurants, both back in front of the house. Then I uh -huh. moved to my own catering business. And eventually, love brought me to San Francisco, and I had children. And uh, as they were quite small, I didn't want to go back to restaurant or catering work. And so I thought maybe I would try teaching. And that proved to be the best thing I've ever done because I really love teaching people how to cook. Um, that was almost 15 years ago. And in the last few years, I've also decided it was time for me to write a book. I felt that I had enough knowledge to put out on, in the world. Um, the, the book, as I said, it's Italy by Ingredient, um, Artisanal Foods, Modern Recipes. So it is not a specifically regional or traditional way of cooking. It's the way that I cook as someone who was born and raised in Italy uh -huh. and still goes to Italy quite a bit because I spent still quite a bit of time in Italy and yes. found herself in an area that is absolutely blessed with agricultural wealth. So I bring my own um what I would call the cornerstones of, of an Italian pantry into uh, the beauty of the agriculture of Northern California. Oh, that's wonderful. Really wonderful. So um, I guess, tell us who started, who in your family started the Butoni company? Uh, that's my husband in the background. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, the Buitoni company was started in 1857, and it was it was started by my great 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 grandparents. Uh -huh. um, the the protagonist, really the main the main person, uh, the main driver was a woman named Julia, and uh -huh. her husband was uh, Giovanni Battista. They bought a small pasta store, um, fresh pasta store in a in a town named San Sepolcro, which is in the oh. upper Tiber Valley in the yes. province of Arezzo and very close to the border of Umbria. Yes. Um, and eventually, really within the life of Giulia and Giovanni Battista, the, the store had already become a, a rather large producing plant, which was the distributing not only was producing uh, mechanically, but it was also distributing outside of its small area of production, which at the time was rather unusual. Um, eventually, other, other places, other plants were opened. One of them was in Perugia. And my great grandfather was the one uh, designated to, to run the Perugia plant. So I was actually raised in Perugia. I see. Wow, very, very interesting. I know I was so impressed because I, when I began going to Italy, and I ended up living there for quite some time, but when I did, I saw the Butoni name there. So I didn't realize it started, the company started in Italy, right? And then came yes. to America. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, because I was always used to seeing Butoni products here. And then in Italy, I saw so many other things that were there too that I didn't see here, but I was really, really yes. impressed by that. Yeah. So, um, so tell us, Viola, your book, is it a recipe book? Does it have like any memories, family memories, or is it just a recipe book? It is a book that um, is divided by ingredients, as the, as the title says, and the there title. are 12 chapters in the book. 
Uh -huh. And each chapter is dedicated to one or a group of ingredients that, that really uh, define the flavors of Italian cooking. Um, the ingredients are for the most part pantry ingredients uh -huh. and they are ingredients that are food crafts made in Italy. So there is um, traditional balsamic vinegar, there is parmigiano, uh, bottarga, and there are anchovies, capers, polenta. Um, each chapter opens with um, my relationship with the ingredients. So how do I remember the ingredient? What, when do I remember it in, in my life? And um, how I've gotten to know it both as a personally with my personal emotion, but also as a food professional. Yes. Uh, when I started working professionally in food, how did the ingredient expand for me and what did it come to mean? Um, and then uh, also the history of the ingredient, both the geography and its uh, contextualization, as well as uh, good tips on uh, using it, but also how to buy it. How do we spot the markers of quality? Because you go out there in the marketplace and there's like hundreds of different polenta. So how do we know which polenta we should buy for what use? And what tells us that this is this is a good brand? Is it worth the money or not worth the money? And if you decide that you don't want to spend the money, what might you expect to get? Uh -huh. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's so then, important. Mm -hmm. Go and ahead. And then recipes, yes. of course. And then, yes, the, yes there are recipes. <laughs> <laughs> so you have your recipes, too. Yeah. So um, I was going to say it's so important because people don't realize they think, when you know olive oil is an ingredient they can just get any olive oil or any polenta or you know any tomato they don't realize that they have to really get you know a high quality or a good quality product yeah. to make the recipe really shine so yes and um, that's, that's especially true for as you know for italian yes. cooking because um we don't really have that many ingredients in our recipes. And this is one of the observations that people leave through my book and they look at it and they say, oh my God, I love the fact that your ingredient, uh, ingredient lists are so short. Right. And so if you're doing something that only has like four or five ingredients, you really can't afford for them to be low quality. Exactly, exactly. That's my sentiments, exactly, really important. So do you have any, any, um, favorite recipe for the holidays or like what do you usually make for the holidays you know we have thanksgiving and christmas coming up i should say that um i am not a huge fan of turkey <laughs> so <laughs> as you know maria i'm sure most italians are not huge fans no, of no. turkey <laughs> my <laughs> sisters in italy turkey think that turkey is like the worst meat ever <laughs> but uh, <laughs> But I, um, so I make duck for Thanksgiving um, nice. and I make a very, it's not a recipe that's in the book, but I make a very simple duck. I just season it with salt and pepper and uh -huh. fill it with lots of different herbs, um, rosemary, bay leaf, sage, savory, and, you know, like a couple of cloves of garlic, uh -huh. half an orange, and then I just let it cook at like 300 degrees for most of the afternoon. It goes on for about four or five hours. And by the time you get to it, the skin is crispy, the um, the flesh is like butter. And then you have this beautiful carcass that you can use to make a wonderful um, duck stock. Oh, yes. yes. So that's, that's the way that I do my Thanksgiving. Now, in terms of the recipes that are in the book, uh -huh. um, for the upcoming holidays, one of my favorite is uh, quails that are stuffed with farro, uh -huh. chestnuts, and porcini. Uh, it is a it is a fairly easy recipe, but the flavors come together very beautifully. And as you know, chestnuts are out right now. Yes. Porcini, because of the how the weather has been, the sun and then all the all the rain, the porcini are sprouting like it's going out of style. Yes. Um, and then of course farro, which is as you know an ancient grain. It is kind of like the original the original gangster grain in Italy. Um, it was. Um, it was found, traces of it were found in a Etruscan tomb. So it, it even predates the Romans. Um, and it is a, it has a, it, it does have gluten, though it is a lower gluten content than regular wheat. And right. it has just a wonderful kind of like wood-like, I mean, in the best of way, not not uh -huh. bad wood, yes. but just wonderful aromatic wood and slightly nutty and smoky flavor. 
And I actually have a whole chapter on it in the book. And that goes from, uh, from farro pasta, pasta made with farro flour, all the way to a cake made with farro flowers. And then also salads and the stuffing for the quails. Um, there is a great uh, spring soup with artichokes and spring mushrooms. Uh, that is a, a soup based on one that was made for my brother's wedding. Uh -huh. In September of, I think it was 1990 or 89, something like that. So you were asking if I have stories and, yes. and memories of the family in the do book. You... And yes, I do. Very many. Yeah. Good. Yes. Because I know food for all of us, especially Italian families, has yes. a very strong connection to our memories. Yes. So family memories, especially. That's wonderful. Um, Viola, thank you so much for being here. So where can people find your book or find you? I know you do cooking classes. I know you're in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, but um, I, do you have yes. a website? I do. So my website is my name, violabuitoni.com. Uh -huh. And also um, they can find me anywhere books are available, uh, both online and in many local bookshops. If you can go to your local bookshops, I always uh, encourage people to do that. Yes. Even even if the book is not available, you can always order it. Uh -huh. um, and uh, yes, so that's where you can find me. And then Great. also you can listen to me rambling on about uh, about ingredients on the Maria Liberati show. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yes. And this will be on, for those of you listening to this as a podcast, this will be on the Marie Liberati Show YouTube channel um, also. So you'll be able to see see us both um, from this episode uh, on the YouTube channel as well. And on the Roku channel, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking. Viola, thank you so much for being here. Happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and much success with your book and everything. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you for thank having you. me on your show. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. It was a pleasure to meet you too.